Now, um, not, not too much to do in this, because it's very similar to conservation of energy. What does conservation mean? Reserved, constant, not changing, the same, etc. Okay? Did you write that down? Conservation momentum? Yeah. Yeah. Also known as collisions. You probably, I'm willing to bet all of you have studied this topic in physics before. As soon as you see the formula, I'll say you probably have. Okay, so. Collisions is a special type of problem in physics. Uh, between two masses and there's no no external force acting on the colliding system so we are looking at problems where we have two things and they they come together and they collide okay but what's important is there's no external force meaning as this slides along the table there is no force pushing it and also unrealistically there's no friction now you all know that that's unrealistic right <laughs> Because uh, as soon as I tap it, it will slow down. Okay, But in some situations, we can ignore the friction. Like in the picture here. We all know that the ball, as it rolls across the table, will eventually stop. Yeah, But for most of the journey, you can ignore the friction because the, it, it takes a while for the ball to slow down and stop. Yeah, And there's no force making the ball move. There was a force that started it to move, but... Is there a force that's keeping it moving? No. And this is the type of problem we look at in collisions. Okay? Like I said, not 100% realistic because most collisions happen because there's one thing with one force collides with another thing that has another force. They're not, they're not freely moving. Okay? So, um, what is the conservation of... Well, you could probably figure this out, actually. Firstly, what is the formula for momentum? Do you remember? Mass times velocity. Mass time velocity. So what do you think it means to say that momentum is conserved? The momentum at the beginning, beginning equals the momentum at the end. And momentum is mass times velocity. So if you have two masses, you can say the momentum will be conserved. And as a formula, that's the following. M1U1 plus M2U2 equals M1V1 plus M2V2. What does M1U1 represent? The momentum of the first object at the beginning. M2U2? The momentum of the other object at the beginning. M1V1, the momentum of object 1 at the end. And M2V2, the momentum of object 2 at the end. And uh, you don't have to write all of this down, but you should at least write down the formula. Now, was I right or wrong? Have you seen this before in high school? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't used them in calculations? He did, but like, it wasn't like, he didn't make it look like it's important to our lives. It was like, <laughs> so close. Very, li very little of what we do in physics is important in your life. <laughs> very little. <laughs> It's important for your university application, but for your life, not really important. You know, just like what you do in maths isn't important for your life, or chemistry, or EAP. Yeah. <laughs> now I didn't say that. That is very different to what I'm saying. No, think about it. How many times, because teacher, let's say let's say I have a job now. How many times am I going to remember? Potential energy, cause energy. You? I'd say zero. <laughs> <laughs> but look, you need it to get into college, and you need college to get a job, and this is just the reality of life. Life is a stop. Ah. Uh, oh, harsh. Ah. Uh. Hey. If you think about it. I know. Think about it. Life ain't fair. No, Trust me, I know. I know. Where? Like, I've got several masters and I'm teaching you guys. Yeah. I, I, I know <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is, this is, no, you chose this. I asked you, you said no. I'm only, I'm, fellow, I'm only joking. It's an absolute pleasure to teach this class. Yeah. I'm, I'm only joking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Continuing. Yeah. Do you have that formula? Yes. Yeah. Well, just think about it. No, I, no, no, I, I think about it. No, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm fine. 
Right, now, um, broadly speaking, there are two types of collisions. Uh, yes, that's it, what are they, Bello? Elastic and inelastic. Now, do you know the difference, though? When it stays, when it stays a quick expansion, that the elastic coming back to the states after the yeah, bounce back. That it has to do with whether they click together or they, they bounce. But actually, uh, that is true. Our definition is slightly different, but it has the same result. We say a collision is elastic if there's no kinetic energy lost. So if you calculate the kinetic energy at the beginning, mm -hmm. and you calculate the kinetic energy at the end, and you discover that they, they're the same, then that means we say the collision is elastic. Okay. However, if you discover that you have less kinetic energy at the end than at the beginning, you say that it's inelastic. Now, where did this missing energy go? Well, probably heat. Yeah. Now, this definition is different to the definition you had in high school, so you want to write this down carefully. No, uh, no, I don't think so. Not without uh, bellow. Not without an external force, which we don't have. <coughs> now, you guys were saying about whether it clicks together or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, that is true as well. But in the exam, when they ask you, is it elastic or inelastic, or they ask you to check if it's elastic or inelastic, they need you to do a kinetic energy calculation. Yeah? So in which one does it bounce? Oh, I forget now. Um, elastic, I think they bounce, I think. Inelastic. And inelastic, I think, is when they click together. And they stay there. Yeah, I think so now. I think so. Yeah. Although, Velo, you can have situations where they bounce and it's still inelastic if the, if the, if the material is not um, like rubbery enough, you know. <coughs> okay, can I continue? Yeah. You have that? Yep. Yeah. So, I have two examples to do a, a fairly straightforward one and a more difficult one. Now, I actually think you could probably already do this easy one here uh, because it's a standard one a one kilogram trolley rolls towards a stationary two kilogram trolley at a speed of three when they collide they stick together okay so first question what's m1 one m2 two u1 three and u2 zero V1 and V2 are the same. Why? Because, because they're stuck together. Yeah, so V1 equals V2, and you can call that just X. So you can say V1 equals X, and V2 equals X. I want you to solve for X. What is the velocity of the system after the collision? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. now, it's just a linear equation, so it only should take you a few seconds. So give me the answer there. Uh, I, 3 and 2 and 5 is it? 3 3 four. yeah okay I think I have the answer okay I think you should have the first part done huh so, M1, what do you say? One, one. one times three, three. three plus zero. Zero. zero times two equals three x plus two x. Yeah? So you have three equals five x. So x, which is the speed, is equal to zero point six. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So I thought mass one is one, not three. Do I have it backwards? Oh, thank you. So I have one. X, is one. X, is one. X is one. So mass one, sorry, is 
It's one. one, one yeah. It's one, sorry. And X is X. The V is X, sorry. And mass two is what? Two. Two. Okay, thank you, thank you. 3x equals 3. So the speed is 1, is it? Yes. Thank you. Okay. B. What is the kinetic energy before the collision? Okay. Does mass 1 have kinetic energy before the collision? Yes. Does mass 2? No. Now, why? Stationary. Stationary. So, a half m v squared. Is that right? Yes. 4.5 joules. Okay, C. What is the kinetic energy after the collision? Does mass 1 have kinetic energy after the collision? It does. After the collision, both masses are moving. They're stuck together and they're moving. So, uh, what is the kinetic energy of the first mass after the collision? It's a half, 1, I don't know. One squared. Oh, yeah, yeah. And what's the kinetic energy of the second one? A half. Two. One squared. Is that 1.5? Yeah? D. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What type of collision is this? Is it elastic or inelastic? Why? It lost. Uh, the reason is it lost how much? Uh, three joules. Three joules, isn't it? Of kinetic energy. Okay, and finally, E. What was the impulse on each trolley? Okay. Do you remember the formula for impulse? Impulse? Very good. MV minus MU. So let's do it for the first trolley. What's the mass of the first trolley? And the V? One. And one and the U? No, for the first trolley it wasn't zero. It was three, wasn't it? So this is minus two kilogram meters per second. And let's get the impulse on the second trolley. What's the mass of the second trolley? Three, two. two, isn't it? The V? One, one. And the U? Zero. And what's this equal to? Zero. Now look. They yeah, they're equal, but what's with the sign? Opposite. Opposites. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Equal but opposite? Yes. Yeah, this is basically uh, like Newton's third law. That the impulse on the first mass mm -hmm. will equal uh, the impulse on the second mass, but just opposite in sign. <coughs> okay? So if the first trolley, as a result of the collision, experiences an impulse of minus 2, then the second trolley, as a result of the collision, will experience an impulse of plus 2. This is Newton's third law in action. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Is that okay, guys? Yeah. Now, the next example I want to do is a little bit harder. I think this example is probably similar to what you've done in high school before, perhaps. Maybe? <coughs> Roughly. Okay. Can I go to the next example? Yes. Yeah. Okay. A two kilogram mass heading right at speed four collides with a two kilogram mass heading left at speed two. As a result of the collision, a tenth of the kinetic energy is lost. What are their speeds after the collision? Okay, so I'll do it, but just to start, I just want you to write down the info, the M1, the U1, and so on. So,
Okay, so let's apply the conservation of energy formula. So what's M1, please? Two. 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 U1? Two. Four. Plus M2? Two. And U2? Two. Two. Equals M1, which is two. V1, do we know? No. Plus M2? V2. Uh, it looks like this can be become V1 plus V2 equals 6. Yes. Yeah. Now, what's the problem here? Can you solve for V1 and V2? No. No, no why not? It's two, unknowns. It's two unknowns. So we need a second equation, don't we? Mm -hmm. How do we get the second equation? Well, there's a piece of information I've not used. As a result of the collision, a tenth of the kinetic energy is lost. So who can give me an equation that represents the meaning of that sentence? A tenth of the kinetic energy is lost. So I have Ke1 and Ke2. What's the relationship here? Ke1 equals Ke2 over 10. Nice try, but no. Ke2 Say again? Ke2 equals 0 by 10. Yes. So I had to think about that. Yeah. Uh, so a tenth of the energy is lost. So which is bigger, Ke1 or Ke2? Ke1 is bigger. Yeah. A tenth is lost, though. So if you start with Ke1 and then reduce it by 10%, that's the same as just multiplying it by 0.9. If you reduce Ke1 by 10%, you will get Ke2. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean when I say it's reduction of 10%. Okay? So this is the second equation. <coughs> but of course we need to sub in the terms. Uh, 0 0.9. Okay, what's Ke1? A half M1. What's a half M1? Well, what's M1? Two, 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 two. And so a half 2? Now can you see why I used mass as 2? It makes it easier. So this will just be V1, uh, sorry, U1 squared. What, uh, so what's U1? Four. Four, isn't it? Yeah. Squared? <coughs> 16. Plus a half M2, U2 squared. So that's four. Yeah. So, so before the collision, we had 20 joules of energy. But if I multiply by 0.9, I'll have 18 joules. This is how much energy I have after the collision. Two joules less. 18 equals Ke2. What's Ke2? A half M1. What's a half M1? Well, that's one. Mm -hmm. So it's 18 equals V1 squared plus a half M2. V1. Yeah. So now I have V1 squared plus V2 squared equals 18. Two equations, two unknowns. One linear, one quadratic. Seen this in maths lately? How do we solve one linear and one quadratic? Substitution. Substitution. V1 equals 6 minus V2. Sub it in. 6 minus V2 squared plus V2 squared equals 18. Uh, what's that? 36 minus 12 V2 plus V2 squared plus V2 squared equals 18. <sighs> 2 V2 squared minus 12 V2. Plus 18 equals 0. Divide by 2. V2 squared minus 6V2 plus 9 equals 0. Uh, 3? 3, yeah. 3, yeah. three. Just 3. Yeah. V2 equals 3. And what does that make V1 equal to? If I use this. It has to be 3 as well. So, yeah. Uh, are you sure? It's only 3. Yeah, because it's uh, minus 3 minus 3, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, we can check that it works. Look. <coughs> 3 plus 3 equals 6? Yeah. 3 squared plus 3 squared equals 18? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I guess the story checks out. Yeah. Now, good news is, those two questions I did... 
90% of the time in the exam, it's like the first example. But there is a chance, 10% of the time, you'll get one like this. Okay, so if you're lucky, which you should be, it should be like the easy one. But if you're unlucky, I'm afraid to say it'll be like this harder one. How many are there? Nice. Of course, that just tells you that they love asking this in the exam. Yeah. <laughs> when is our next physics class, though? Next week. No, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Next week. No, tomorrow. So you have all of the weekend to do it. You have all of Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's only six questions a day. <laughs> no, no need to thank me, that's okay. Uh, right, did you write that down? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, how are we doing for time here? Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll wrap it up there. Tomorrow is a double maths, yeah. is it? Uh, one lecture and one tutorial then. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think the timetable is a little bit different for tomorrow, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We have a country lab yeah. in yeah. Yeah, so when is the maths? Before the morning. Or like the 9 o'clock? No, the 11 o'clock. Yeah, in yeah. what room? Please say, nice room. I know oh, it's not that, is it? It's a bit real. Three, three, three or two. Yeah, so that's more room with the remote projector. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, I'm going to see if I can swap with a teacher to use a better room. Yeah. Uh, so how did you like the movie? Hmm? How did you like the movie? Because it doesn't have the, it doesn't have the TV. You can exactly. never record that in class. Is the one we used last Friday? Last week Friday. Yeah. And the Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'll see if I can do a room swap tomorrow, okay? So I won't push it. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it that? You know, um, the song, you know, which is the girl, right? Yeah. The net is a bird. Yeah. Well, space. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's a deep what, what, question. Yeah. The light only. <laughs> you can only you can only see the light when it strikes the surface. Yeah. So it's dark. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. It's like so the light's coming into this room, right, from the window. Yes. I don't see it. I only see it as soon as it strikes the surface and reflects into my eyes. Mm. You know, mm. when it strikes the surface, it can't reflect anyway. You won't see it then. Shit. You won't see it. That's why we can't see asteroid. I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it's not reflecting on the other stars, but like the sun is obviously star. Right? Yeah, the, the light from distant stars is not strong enough to reflect and cause it to be visible. And those black holes, yeah, actually so that means that which that means, no. <laughs> yeah, that, that means that like there might be other stuff in space, or because like yeah. what if it's absorbing light? Yes, you're instead right. Of reflecting it. Ooh. Yes, you're right. Ooh. Correct. Ooh. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> well, how how this that is was this is called dark matter and dark energy. Yeah. Okay, but how about now? What about the heat? You don't feel heat. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. For the same reason, uh, the, the the heat energy is only felt when it strikes the surface. Yeah, from the sun. So you also strike the surface. Yeah. So as soon as the light strikes the surface, then the heat gets transferred. 